few words about me. Okay, so here uh, he does all about me. So I'm a, I'm an English graduate, until English graduate, and uh, um, I shifted to accessibility just eight years back. Okay, um, I work for GQ Software. Uh, my interests include listening to music, reading, blogging, and even I do beatboxing when I, you know, with a, when I really am, you know, bored or something like that. Okay. Okay, this is today's agenda. So it is self-explanatory. I don't need to really go through this. So we can move to the next one. So I think this slide is about what is accessibility. Is it? Okay. So um, I don't know how many of you know about accessibility. First of all, anybody knows about it? Yes. Alex? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're the only one. No. So you are.
lot of fever can get into that frustration because of a checkout process that was not actually usable by uh, an able-bodied person. Okay, what would happen to a person with disabilities? That's what uh, this story explains. So we'll go further. So, as I said, why accessible forms? You know, uh, this is all self-explanatory. So, accessible forms, people you know, will your site entry, I mean, you, if you want to enter into any social network, any email, anything, accessible forms are the forms of the first gateway to your site. And obviously, if you are a WordPress uh, user, you want people to contact you, that is the only way for you or for them to contact you. And if they are frustrated, obviously, they will not fill any details, and obviously, they won't come back. That is what I told you this slide. Okay, so here um, I will explain like what all would make an accessible form better, I mean a form better. So if you want to go through there is labels, um, you know, marking the required fields, okay, and you have uh, you have uh, instructions, you have error identification in text, and you have um, error suggestions to make, and with all that, your your these are all a few things or at least the main uh, basic ingredients to make or appendages to make your forms very accessible. So we'll go to the next one. So here the first slide says a placeholder is not a label at all. Okay, you see the screenshots here, you can see here that a login form has email and password as placeholder as label. The once the user starts to fill in this particular uh, value, the label disappears. So imagine a cognitive, a short-term memory loss person is filling the form. How, okay, this, this particular form has only two fields I can still forgive, but if the form is very big, what will happen to that person? You are talking about that. So that is why I said placeholder is not a solution. I mean, there are other points also. Placeholder does not need color contrast. Uh, it, is, it, is, it will go, it is it just illusive. So do not use placeholder as a label. That's the first point I want to make. Okay, so this is self explanation. I don't need to really talk about it, but I will just say that you know, people who are blind, low vision, and uh, you know, cognitive users will really benefit. So imagine you are buying a medicine bottle without a label. After two, three days, if you, uh, you know, if you forget. Where you kept it, you will be searching. Um, it, is, it is mixed among other bottles. You will never know what is what is your medicine. And if you take something wrong, what will go wrong? So that's the same thing in the website too. So it helps everyone in general, but you know people uh, who have low vision and uh, I know low vision and uh, people who have uh, cognitive disabilities and all, for them it is going to be really beneficial if you have a permanent visible label. And make sure that it is in a text format. So use, you know, label uh, tag or you know something like that. But never use uh, for just for the aesthetic purpose or just for the design purpose. Don't do not use, um, you know, temporary label. Yeah. So here, this is another thing. So if you see the screenshots again, as we have explained, so there are uh, two address fields, uh, address sections here. One is the shipping address, and another one is a building address section, right? So obviously the fields would be the same. Address 1, address 2, line 1, line 2, zip code. But what address am, am I filling? This is going to be a really helpful thing if you group the form fields with appropriate groupings for the screen reader users. Because bigger forms are going to really confuse screen reader users, people who are blind and use assistive technology. So that is the reason we are telling you we need to group them if you have a gender, the male and female radio buttons must be grouped with the gender using uh, page set legend or even you can use aria property and then you can group them so that people identify. And if you use page set and legend, even sighted users get a small line around it to say that okay, this belongs to gender. So if you think that is a bad design, you can take out that line, but that's helpful that they don't. So, um, any, uh, note down your questions on labeling anyway, so I'm moving to instructions now. 
So forms are the toughest thing to fill. If you agree or don't agree, it's, it's up to you. But you know, for example, go to any government examination forms. Man, it takes years to fill it. Okay. And several times I have helped my friends, blind uh, people who are blind to help uh, to understand forms. And I myself failed to understand what they say, what they have to fill, and where are the instructions. And when you are creating your password uh, account, what are the password criteria that you want to tell the users? So mention them up in a prop in a proper format. I mean, tell them okay, your password should contain uh, eight characters, one special character, one number. Many of the sites provide, but some sites throw that as an error instead of providing an instruction, which is a very bad practice because, again, as I said, people with disabilities, elder citizens will really get frustrated and they will not, you know, use the site again. That's why I'm saying, do not clutter the site with instructions for even first name and last name. So you don't need to provide instructions for first name and last name, but at least where it is necessary, provide a context sensitive instruction. Okay, so this is another important thing that if you want to consider your form. So there are big forms, okay, so say so imagine there is a checkout field, checkout form. Okay, you, you don't want the users to fill their official phone number or their company name, which is an optional field. So the form is a mixture of the mandatory fields and the optional fields. So at least give the users an instruction to a star or the text like required, or you can also use required attribute from HTML5 or ARIA to mark them as required so that users do not commit errors. It, it prevents errors. That is one of the principles of universal design is to prevent errors before <coughs> users commit or users make. So mark your required fields. Don't use color alone to do that. Give proper text, give proper visual clue because colors, there are color languages who cannot see different colors. People who cannot see red color, people who cannot differentiate between red and green. So do not use colors to make these kind of markings. Use a star mark that is typeable or use a required word as a text in, in your data itself. So that, is, that will help a lot of users to complete their task so easily. Okay. So this is very, very important because sometimes, 100 times a week, if you click submit button, but it will say the form will not be someone will be wondering why this form is not submitted. And what will happen is you will be marking the error field with the red color uh, code, I mean red color marking. And people who cannot understand these kind of legends, these people who are learning disabilities, reading disabilities, color blind, people who are screen reader users, blind users, cannot understand these kind of error identification. So provide them with textual error messages. As much as possible, provide them an inline textual error message just below the themes and associate them using different techniques available. And mention which field is in question. So as the screenshot shows, please enter your email address. That should be the error message instead of saying invalid email. Because many people cannot understand this much of invalid email. What do you mean by that? I, I understand because I did enter English. But not everyone comes to us outside, you know, with that kind of qualification. And you know, there are people who, who can, who can uh, I know someone who did their English degree to correspondence, but their exact communication just well still standard. So if they come and say invalid email, the word invalid is computer specific. So use clear error messages to identify the fields and associate them, which will be really helpful for everyone. So this is another thing that I would like to say. So there are, there are places where you cannot provide instructions. But when the users make mistakes in your uh, form, in the form of uh, in inputting the data, wherever possible provide fixes. For example, uh, data, so dates. Okay, the date must be D E M M Y Y. Other date must be M M D E Y Y. Example, 160698, that kind of instruction. So there is other uh, example that I have given here. So for example, a credit card value must be at least 16 characters. That kind of, you know, uh, error suggestions must be given. Or you can also point them that where the credit card number will be located. You know, these kind of error fixes would really help them. And you want the users to fill in the data only in a particular format. Provide them in the error messages, emails, example at domain.com. 
So many people would be interested in the act symbol. So when they see this example in the elements, they know the example I have to read or come and tell them, oh, okay, this is what I need to do, I made a mistake. Okay? The next one. So this is all self-explanation. I don't need to uh, okay, use descriptive and clear labels and use them permanently, don't use a temporary label as I said, and associate, programmatically associate them with the form fields using foreign writing that are Arya methods. And you can also uh, you know, provide instruction where it is necessary, you can provide a tool tip or you can provide a visible instruction and uh, um, use Arya to, you know, sometimes use Arya if you can't make any uh, you know, any changes in the form using HTML format, instead you can use ARIA to make the changes, but use them very sparingly and read ARIA specifications before using ARIA for that purposes. Okay, so if uh, that is, I mean, these are, these are things that we have just explained, I mean, already this is all gone in detail, so I just wanted to reiterate these points. There's nothing much added here, so we can go to the next one. So, Okay, why I included, first of all, is accessible forms are not specific to WordPress. Anybody who is building a website can click accessible forms, but obviously it is a WordCamp, so without touching upon WordPress, it is not, it is incomplete. So, I think most of you know this, WCAD 2.0 for gravity forms, which will make your form automatically accessible. Um, and then the next one is uh, contact forms for a contactless page, uh, when you have a contact form. Even that, uh, that is also available to make your form accessible. But other than that, um, not because they are sponsors, I mentioning them, but Jetpack form module is actually accessible, except the only one thing. They are using HTML5 error methods, so error messages will disappear as soon as you leave the thing. So that is the only drawback that we see as an accessibility consultant. But otherwise, you can use Jetpack form module, and that also can make your forms pretty accessible. So I, like I've gone very fast, I know, um, because these are all, you know, the really basic, or fundamental things of an accessible form, there's nothing that, you know, nobody knows yet, it's just a reiteration, but if you still want to have, ask any questions, um, you're welcome. So I have to So when there are no questions, there are two things. One, I understand everything, no, I don't understand anything. So I consider the first one, okay? And uh, yeah, there are questions. Yeah, sure. What are your uh, thoughts on uh, forms that have two columns? Uh, is it accessible uh, at, at, from your point of view or not? By default, it is not accessible. But if you want to make it, yes, you can make it accessible. So, uh, for example, if the forms are arranged in a table where you have only two columns, the left side will give you the form labels as a table header, and the right side will give you the uh, edit fields. You can make the, the uh, uh, labels as ch. So automatically the page will get associated, and that will become accessible, obviously. And you can make spaces for the messages and instructions within the TP cells, obviously. But do not make create columns based on CSS and you know try to do that because uh, sometimes screen readers will not interpret you know those things appropriately. Then you have to go for only RI as an option. So I have a question. Yes. So accessibility is uh, not only in the forms; it is for whole website. Yes. So uh, it would be better like for uh, developers. Uh, like if you could tell me like. Uh, is there any guidelines or standards that we can refer uh, like when we are uh, building the uh, website? And also, if you could be able to uh, like remember and tell me some of the uh, websites which has uh, very good uh, accessibility implemented, so that we can refer and uh, build the websites better. Uh, the second question is a very tough question. Okay? In the world, there is no hundred percent accessibility. But yeah, I can tell you, there is a site called nobility.org, K-N-O-B-I-L-I-T-Y dot O-R-G. Okay? This site is compliant with WCG 2.1. Okay, what is WCG 2.1? Anybody knows? Web content access. 
accessibility guideline 2.1. Okay, dq.com, dqe.com, even that side is uh, that site is our company site. I'm not promoting our company, don't worry. But if you just visit the site, you just see how it is accessible. That is also representing 2.1 compliant. Um, there are a lot of other vendors that are there. Other companies like Apple, um, all of them are you know, doing a very good job. You can also visit digitalalumbi.com, which is our blog, and we write a lot of blog posts on accessibility related things. Uh, I've given this in the reference section. I, uh, I have not posted these slides or given them within probably. And you know, you can, anybody who wants these slides, you can take it from me. Um, and then, um, yeah, so there are a lot of tools. I mean, how many of you are using this AXE? Me. AXE? Me. Good address. Anyone else? No one? Okay. So I, it is a very, it's an open source tool, so I'm not, uh, it's not a commercial, even though it's produced by a commercial company, it is just an open source tool. You can integrate it with your, um, you know, uh, frameworks. It is available on GitHub. I don't have the link, you know, but I can get it for you. Um, um, so, yeah, there is a Firefox plugin, there is a Chrome plugin also on Chrome Store. Um, but it is available as a JavaScript library which you can integrate with your framework and as and when you can uh, even WordPress accessibility checker also uses um, Axe to some extent. Okay? Um, but WordPress accessibility checker, I'm not really sure how much it detects errors or how depth it goes. I'm not sure if the writer might not use it so I cannot comment on it. Um, but use Axe as, a, as an open source tool. There are other tools also, Wave, Accessibility Tool, but now it has reappeared for Firefox and I really we are really not using it, use it for this thing. But Axe is an uh, open source, it is used by even Microsoft in the uh, Insights program and Google uses it in their Lighthouse program and uh, so you can take it from GitHub from, uh, you know, you can also uh, add it to your frameworks, you can install your plugins from Firefox and Chrome source. And uh, I'll really go through the reference once more. So this is, um, if you, this, there is a series that we ran uh, a few months back on anatomy of accessible forms. So you can read it here. And then you, you have links for WCAG 2.0 and 2.1. You also have a W3C accessibility page. If you want to develop a business case for your businesses or your organization. To fight for accessibility, you can develop the guidelines that they have provided here. So more references are there if you want to meet this uh, meet me person and friend. I'm available throughout the day uh, and I'm uh, open for any discussion or any questions. Actually. Any more questions? No. So this is a thanks that I have given my contact details here. You can note down or you can anyway get these slides. Uh, later. Okay. So thank you so much for patiently listening to me.